Right, everyone. Well, welcome back. And we are very luckily joined this morning by local MMA fighter, David Martinez. So, David, thank you very much for joining us this morning, man. So, look, first thing I want to ask you is, obviously, a few days ago, you unfortunately had to withdraw um, from your upcoming fight due to both illness and injury. And I actually think your action should be recognized here as, you know, while it definitely would have been gutting to, you know, have to withdraw, ultimately, your health is the most important thing, particularly for the longevity of your career. Um are you able to speak to the injury at all or are you kind of looking to just keep that in house as it were? Uh, well, you know, I won't go too far into detail, man, but like, uh, if, if, in my opinion, like any one of these things by themselves wouldn't be enough to sort of take me out of the fight. It's just that they happen one after another, after another. Uh, and, and overall just didn't leave me in a very good state to be training for a title fight. Mm. <clears throat> Hundred percent, Dave. Um, I think a lot of mixed martial artists that that sort of come through eternal, especially being a champion like yourself, um, having a very good track record, you know, going on and signing with the UFC. I can imagine that would be the the end goal for you. So, is there a specific time frame that you'd like to achieve this by? Is it sort of something where you're more so happy rolling with the punches and knowing that your time will eventually come? Well, I'm definitely someone who more who likes to just roll with things, man. I don't have a, a set time frame because, well, when I do, it just never works out. Right. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, <clears throat> David, your team Ignite have really been making their presence known, uh, especially on the amateur scene. You know, particularly this year. You know, on cards like Beatdown, XFC. What is it specifically that makes Ignite the right sort of gym for you as a mixed martial artist? Is it the sense of community on the mat, or is it the style and approach of the coaches? Yeah, I would say it's a combination of the, of the two things, as well as you know other factors, but. Uh, what makes Ignite so great is it's like a um, it's a training hub where people from all around come to and train, and so you know you, uh, when you've got people tra- like traveling to, and to train with you, you get all different looks and different body types, and in that while well, you know you yourself stay in the same spot, mm. it's a a very handy thing to have as well as you know Dunstan's approach to training is always. <laughs> Quite spectacular, I would say. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Dave, um, one thing I definitely did want to get your take on was um, the UFC two eighty four matchup between Alexander Volkanovski and Islam Makhachev. Um, what are your thoughts heading into that fight? And, and honestly, who do you see walking away victorious from that one? Ah, uh, well, uh, in in my mind, that's that's a rough matchup uh, for my boy Volk, but. Uh, I've heard people say that about nearly everyone he's fought in the past, and he just always comes up. Uh, I, so I believe you know he'll he'll figure out a way mm. to deal with the threats of Makachev and then ideally put him away. Yeah, <laughs> sure. So, out of curiosity, David. Did you feel that you put more pressure on yourself as a martial artist to perform in your early amateur bouts or in your early professional bouts? As you know, on the one hand, as a new amateur, it can be a lot to take in and process when you're, you know, entering the cage and sort of entering that environment. Whereas, you know, as a professional, there's more on the line, you know, obviously a bit of money, there's your record, you know, on the line. So did you feel you put more pressure on yourself as an amateur or a professional? Oh. Uh, I've thought about this, but I really think, yeah, I put more pressure on myself as a professional, but I feel that's just uh, the nature of like the pressure as an amateur was building with each win mm. type thing. So I felt like hey, it doesn't, the fact there's no difference between amateur and professional for me in that sense. It's just that uh, or fight after fight, like each feels a bit more, but, uh, if you get what I mean there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Dave, I just want to quickly touch on something. Um, speaking on your injury, is, is there a sort of a time frame that you can sort of give us on your recovery and ultimately when you'd like to return by? Or is that sort of unclear at this point? Well, it looks like I, I'll have to wait till next year to actually return to competition. But um, hopefully now that I'm not putting my body through a fight camp and a weight cut, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the problems will come good pretty fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hundred um, percent, David. Whilst pursuing um, MMA, you're also participating in some grappling comps as well. Um, do you have any any interest in, in high profile grappling matches? You know, maybe internationally later on in your career, or is it something where you're just solely focusing on, on MMA at this point? 
I would say the sole focus is MMA. Like I just do grappling comps for fun, and yeah. I've never I've never taken them seriously or prepared for them or in any mm. sense. And so I just you know occasionally see one and I'll jump in. But I mean, like hey, speaking of grappling comps, it's like uh, who would have known that me taking a grappling comp last year was like the ultimate stepping stone to my plan of getting yeah. the vital back mm. yeah exactly yeah, for sure so just to kind of touch on that david when you first began your martial arts journey did you find that you took more to striking did you take more to wrestling did you take more to jiu-jitsu when you first sort of started uh well when i started man i was leaning more toward the striking until uh, you know I actually i actually started training mm. and I'm not actually that good at the striking business but hey this grappling stuff really works. Yeah. I <laughs> uh, just went down that route, uh, sort of developed my grappling skills, and they've served as my strong base ever since. Mm, for sure. Well, look, David, last question from us, man. We don't want to keep you too long. And, you know, it is a beautiful Saturday morning. It's a good day to go to the beach or get a coffee. So, look, David, it's very evident that your partner, Jane, is, you know, your biggest supporter, obviously managing you, taking care of socials and interviews and all of that. What is it like having someone who is in your corner completely and willing to do those things for you to really push your career forward and to sort of push you to success, you know, especially in a sport like mixed martial arts where, you know, it can sometimes be kind of difficult for people to understand the amount of, you know, work and effort it takes. Yeah, man, uh, my beloved wife and manager, Jane Abdelaziz. (laughs) (laughs) Look, guys, like having someone like uh, Jane in your life is just like in- incredible. Mm. Uh, the, the, a lot of things that will probably be like, forgotten about because you know I'm I'm, I'm the typical fighter. And I don't think about these things. Like she's got every base covered. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, when she it keeps a good communication with my coaches. It keeps everyone um, sort of like, on the same page. Uh, she, you know, the team comes together beautifully. Mm. That's awesome. Well, look, David, man, we appreciate you giving us a bit of time today, man. And go enjoy your Saturday. But look, rest up, and um, and we look forward to seeing you return to uh, Eternal and defending your lightweight strap soon. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in the UFC as well one day. We'd love to chat again in the future. Awesome. Thank you for having me, guys. No problem. Huh. No problem Definitely. Awesome, Thank man. You, Have a good one.